founder of the Winnipeg Folk Festival and, and the Vancouver Folk Festival. And uh, well, Winnipeg is a place where traditional music is not flourishing at all. And, and uh, it's sort of, in, it's in the middle of the Canadian prairies. And um, well, I, I had a weird upbringing because I, I wasn't allowed to listen to Led Zeppelin or U2 or anything, uh, Rolling Stones in the living room. I had to go to my room to listen to the loud rock and roll because you know only traditional music existed in our main stereo system, and uh, and so in my teen years, I, I you know I, I I didn't know I was a folky, but then one time someone brought me uh, into the volunteer party room that John was just talking about, and I said, uh, you know, what are you doing? He's like, well, I hear there's this really cool band from England coming. I'm gonna go check them out. They're called the Oyster Band, and I was 13 years old, and I walked into the room. And, um, you know, he was talking about earlier on about being, you know, having all these influences and, you know, um, well, I, I saw these folks playing folk music and rock and roll simultaneously. And, and I, re I, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> and so I picked up a couple of, couple of CDs at the shop and, uh, well, I was instantly sold. And, uh, well, what was amazing about getting into the Oyster Band is that it actually drew me to traditional music. <laughs> um, so I also got into playing old-time banjo because my dad's a banjo player, and at the same time sort of got into Irish and English traditional music. And, uh, but here's a little bit of old-time music that comes from Mike Seeger. It's a, it's a little song called Banjo Rust about. I'm so excited to be here right now. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I was 13. <laughs> Tim, this is, I got the old duct tape on the bridge here, so. I'd sew my good gown 